Good evening and welcome to the September 13th meeting of the Beaver Creek. Good evening and welcome to the September 13th meeting of the Parks, Recreation and Culture Board. I hereby call this meeting to order and we'll start with a roll call, please. Mr. Corbett. Here. Mrs. Fulcher. Here. Mrs. Bigari. Present. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Heaton is not here and Mrs. Meyer is not here this evening. Great, thank you. Um, you have in front of you a copy of tonight's agenda. If you've had a chance to look at that, I'll accept a uh, motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve it. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Probably don't need to vote then. So that's <laughs> <laughs> even if I was against it, then it would still pass, right? So agenda approved, thank you. And then the same with the minutes. Um, minutes in front of you from our August 9th meeting. And if uh, those look okay, if we see no changes, I will uh, accept a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, then those are approved as well. Jackie, thanks for putting those together for us. And uh, we'll start this evening with a staff report. Welcome, Kim. Good evening, sorry. You know, we had everything all set up, plenty of time, and then I have the wrong PowerPoint <laughs> pulled up, but we're good now. Um, so we are kind of continuing on, just kind of giving you guys an idea of, as we plan out our year, do our projects. Um, so right about now is budget time. Along with budgets, we also um, prepare a few goals for the year for 2023, and then, of course, also, um, report on our accomplishments. And Aaron, I think I'd lie to you. you do it. If not, I'll just, you know, from memory. Thank you, thank you. All right. So again, when we did our 10-year master plan, um, out of the information that we got from like focus groups, uh, steering committee, everything like that, we had a stakeholder group. Um, and those were the group, the people that kind of narrowed down the vision statement, uh, values, mission. Um, so again, our mission statement is to deliver recreational experiences that enhance quality of life. And our vision is building a happy and healthy community by connecting people to quality parks engaging programs and unique events. Um, our core values are connectivity, health and wellness, safety, inclusion, collaboration, and leadership. So what we like to try to do is from our mission, vision, and values, these four goals that you see up on the screen um, are, are goals every, <clears throat> excuse me, every single year. There are overarching goals. Goal one is quality parks and facilities. Goal two is enhanced connectivity. Three <clears throat> is attractive programs and quality experiences. And four is effective management and efficient operations. So again, we have those four overarching goals. And so what staff does is put together objectives to reach each of those goals. Um, we have not, we're still working on our 2023 goals, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of, um, these are from 2022. So under goal one, quality parks and facilities to develop a master plan for research parkland and ADA improvements. Again, those are objectives to reach our quality parks and facilities. Um, and under connectivity is to develop hiking trails and create neighborhood connections. Um, for attractive programs and experiences, Eclipse 1200 senior center memberships and to determine program gaps by assessing current offerings and community needs. And then the last one is to recruit 10, 10 new volunteers and implement an administrative employee training program. So again, those roll into each of the goals. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we try to do is instead of just like kind of picking different goals or like, hey, let's do this next year. Uh, we were talking the other day. We used to just kind of go with, let's, you know, um, increase rentals at CIB Hall, 
10 percent. Let's add three new programs. Well, this is a more targeted approach to what we're doing. We have our four overarching goals. What objectives can we set to reach those four goals? So um, I think that's the last slide. So you can hit the, that should just be our information. Thank you. Um, so as we look for 2023 and put together objectives, again, staff will kind of look at those four goals, um, see where they fit underneath there, and then um, come up with objectives to reach those. And when we get to November, I think, um, for Park Board, we'll also be able to report back to you. It's like, hey, here's our accomplishments. So some of the things that we put up there, I believe we've already reached those goals and objectives. Um, the Research Park Master Plan, we're in the process of, we haven't achieved that yet. So happy to answer any questions. So then do you do, um, at the end of the year, do a report or look back over what your you know, what you accomplished underneath each one of them, because you had some accomplishments that you wanted to reach, mm -hmm. then how do you assess how well you did? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the pieces I guess I did miss, um, so these are objectives and goals that we give to city council. So quarterly, we're updating the city manager and council of the status of each. And then so th we can go through, and then we're always looking to see where we're at, if we've accomplished it, if we haven't. If our goal was to have it done by the um, end of the second quarter, it may be pushed to the third or we've completed it. Um, and if we get to the end of the year and we haven't, then we'll push it towards the next year. Mm -hmm. Great. Any, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, there's multiple events going on in the building, so I just want to make sure you're at the meeting you want to be at, Parks, Recreation, Culture? Very much so. Okay, good. Thank you, sir. We'll, we have a section for unscheduled visitors. If you have something later, okay. I'll do it first I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now moving on, uh, the division report is next. And uh, I think Aaron's going to bring us that. Sure am. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm right here. Okay, um, a few highlights, starting with the Senior Center. We are having a Senior Center 30th anniversary party. You might be thinking, wait, what, 30 years? I thought we had 15, not that long ago. This is the 30th anniversary of the Senior, Beaver Creek Senior Citizens Club that started at CI Beaver Hall 30 years ago. So it's not the anniversary of our senior center in its current location. <laughs> it's the <laughs> anniversary of that group of people that eventually became the city's senior center. Um, so that is on Friday the 23rd. The public is welcome to come out and enjoy. It's from 11 to 2, kind of an open house style, and it'll actually be at CI Beaver Hall, back where that Senior Citizens Club started meeting 30 years ago. So um, there are 30th anniversary t-shirts for sale, which is pretty exciting. And all those proceeds from the sales of those t-shirts will go to the Beaver Creek Enrichment Association, also known as BEA. That group is the nonprofit group that actually did, has done lots of fundraising over the years, but did a lot of fundraising when we moved into the current facility um, where we have the Beaver Creek Senior Center now. They raised lots and lots and lots of funds to actually furnish and fill that place um, with all of the equipment and needs that we had to start a, you know, the Senior Center there when we moved from CI Beaver Hall. Our annual health fair, if you're looking to save the date, this will actually be before our next park board meeting on Friday, October 7th, is from 9 to noon in the Senior Center Great Room. And if you haven't been to the health fair before, there's a lot of different vendors that come out to share with you different health and wellness services that you may be able to take advantage of now or as you get older. And it's a great time to go ahead and get your flu shot, and lots of different health screenings like blood pressure and hearing checks and those kinds of things. So great kind of one-stop shop to take care of a lot of things as we go into, unfortunately, that cold and flu season and also learn about community resources. Over on the recreation side, I wanted to highlight our athletics programs. Um, I hadn't talked about those probably super recently. recently. Um, and you probably already know that we run softball leagues 
we, um, since 2020, have been running one 14-week league. We are wrapping those leagues, I should say season, with nine different leagues in it. One 14-week season. Um, we're wrapping up those leagues right now. And those games are weeknights at Rotary Park. We had nine leagues this year and last year with approximately, and I did this by, if you estimate 20 people per team, approximately 1,400 players. That's not unique people. Some of those people play on multiple teams, but it's still a lot of bodies out at Rotary Park playing softball each week. It's a big program for us. Um, in 2022, we've had 68 teams. We lost a few from last year. We had 72 teams. Um, but we've been seeing those numbers stay pretty consistent over the past, uh, past several years for that summer league. You might be familiar that before COVID happened, um, we had an additional seven-week fall league, and we no longer have that. Demand was kind of declining for our softball leagues for a few years. And now that we've kind of stayed at this one league, it's kind of stayed pretty steady. Um, for us and w whenever we do surveys at the end of each season That's the one that's the highest in demand that people like they want to keep that 14 week season they get to play one game a week and Meet every team two times. There's eight teams in each league. So It's a lot of fun If you're going out and see want to go out to Rotary Park and see some some fun softball games. There's a wide range of competitiveness I suppose <laughs> in the teams and some people are very impressive adult softball players our soccer leagues we run three nine week seasons very simple a spring summer and fall and those games are Sundays out at Ankeny soccer complex unless they're having a tournament then we'll play over at Rotary Park and um, we had in 2022, including the season going on right now, 525 participants. Again, this is not unique people. A lot of the people who play in spring also play in summer, also play in fall. Um, so it's about 175 people per season. So I would estimate it probably about 200 or a little bit more than 200 unique players. Um, and it's always full with a waiting list. We do have youth athletics. We partner with a couple of organizations to make those possible. Um, we kind of only dabble in the introductory type sports. There are so many community organizations in Beaver Creek that um, as your kiddos get older and they decide, yeah, they really like soccer, they really like softball, they really like tennis or lacrosse, they can go um, to those community organizations and play um, when they get kind of more school aged. But we partner with Skyhawks Youth Sports for the introductory things. If your kiddo has never played golf, has never played flag football, has never played soccer, it's a great way to get started because it's weekly programs or camps. It's not you're signing up for a league and you have multiple practices and games each week. It's less commitment <laughs> um, than one of those. So this fall with Skyhawks Youth Sports, we've got soccer, tennis, pickleball, golf, flag football, and we'll have multi-sport programs in basketball in the winter, um, thanks to the Beaver Creek City Schools allowing us to use some of their spaces as we have to move inside when it gets colder. And then this year, we actually started with Amazing Athletes, a new program in the area. This is a multi-sport program for the preschool-aged athletes, for three to six-year-olds, and they play actually a mix of 10 different sports throughout their six week session. And um, they're out at Rotary Park and they'll actually move inside to Lafino Plaza in the winter time as well. All right, moving on to a couple of fun events we have coming up. We have next week our fishing derby. We'll stock the pond. Uh, the pond will actually be stocked on Thursday morning sometime between 9 and 11 is what is scheduled this week so if you want to go out and see how that works it's pretty fun um, we'll get a mix of channel catfish and hybrid bluegill fun easy things for the kids to catch and all you have to do is go out between those dates snap a picture of your kiddo fishing if they catch a fish we'd love to see it if they don't we'd still like to see a picture of them trying to catch a fish <laughs> out at the park and if you 
send us our, your photo to our parks uh, at beavercreekohio.gov email address. We'll enter you in a drawing to win prizes. So we've got tickets to Kings Island and some other local attractions as well as different goodies and prizes, kids fishing poles and things like that uh, that you could win. So awfully fun. And then save the date for our Try a Truck, one of the community's favorite events, usually our, one of our most highly attended event, October 15th, we'll have Try a Truck. The fire department also hosts their open house just up the road. This is out on o Orchard Lane, so you can come to both events on the same, same day. And we will have all sorts of fire trucks and police cars and city snow plows and lawn mowers and all sorts of big rigs out for people to climb aboard and honk the horns. If you're not as much into the honking the horns or the flashing lights, you can come to the first hour where we'll have our sensory friendly hour, where we'll not have the lights on, we won't do the horns, be a little bit um, more accommodating to people who may not want all of, all of that. Moving over to the parks uh, division side of things, you may remember we had a fish study at Dominic Lofino Park done. I wanted to provide you a, a report on that. Overall, it was a really positive report. It was fun to read. Um, they said there was good visibility and healthy planktonic algae bloom, which is good. You normally hear that word algae, that term algae bloom with negative. Ours was good level, so that's, that's great. And we had a good amount of wood and brush cover. The lake condition, they said, was very good. Um, we do need to add some sort of structure on the northern side of the lake. So this is like something underwater um, to provide more habitat for the fish, um, more cover for them. Um, you, you, if you think about the south side, if you're familiar with that lake, there's more trees um, above it, and so also there's more things underneath in the water. Um, so that kind of thing can be natural materials. You can also be structures that they sell um, that are good to sink in the water to help the fish and helps the overall health of the pond. And then uh, mostly, and I had to Google this, I'm not a fish expert, mostly we had gizzard shad in there, this is the type of fish, and bluegill. And those help feed the bass and catfish. They didn't find a whole lot of bass and catfish, but they know that they are there. Um, so I said that was good. Oh, that's a gizzard shad picture? Oh, good job. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. All right, um, Shout Park. We are doing fun things out there. A few years ago, we replaced the the older kids area of the playground, we are now replacing the uh, tot lot play structure, which was originally installed in 2001. So it's been over 20 years, time to replace it. We will keep the mound slide, so no one has to worry about that. Um, but in order to do that, we're actually starting work on Sunday to remove the old play structure. That's this upcoming Sunday, the 18th. We will close the entire playground at Shout Park because there will be heavy equipment and trucks moving in and out of there. So for everyone's safety, the whole thing will be closed down this Sunday. Um, but then once they actually get to work, the rest of the playground will be able to open up while the tot area is being um, finished. And that just that area will be closed until it's all done. So that'll be installed that next week. So shouldn't be uh, too long of a process. We do replace our playgrounds on a 20 year cycle and the old equipment will be disposed of. It cannot be donated or reused as it's um, past its lifetime. Sure. Are you replacing it with the same equipment that you're removing? For the most part, or is it was this a community assessment to see what the community want, or how, what's going to go in there? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the the picture that you see is what's going in there. Um, if you're familiar with what's there, it's quite similar actually to what's there. Um, Sharon, I'm like thinking about it. It's very similar to what's there um, right now. There's not as much. And Kim can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm under the impression there's not as much different variety 
of play equipment for that age group, um, for the toddler age. It's like two to five year olds. Um, it's pretty simple, little ramps and walk across and slides and <laughs> the balance beams and the little sit in chair. Didn't, didn't we do, uh, when we replaced the other equipment a couple years ago, didn't we do the community feedback piece then? Yeah. Uh, which included all the the entire playground, mm -hmm. but it's been we've just replaced it in, in phases. stages, yeah, phases. Mm -hmm. Balance bars, are new. I don't think we have balance bars out there either, so we'll be getting new balance bars. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we are have a community recovery grant. Um, so we're able to do a few great things. We've got turf repair to do at Grangeview Acres, tree replacement at Grangeview Acres, Spicer Heights, and Wartinger Park. We can replace roofs on the cabins at Wartinger Park. And, and you no might notice community recovery grant and all of these parks are in the area where we had the tornado come through. Um, so we're able to do some repairs that um, are needed and we hadn't been able to do yet. So thankfully, through this grant, um, the total dollars we're spending is over $130,000. Um, 108000 dollars ish is from the grant, and then we are providing just shy of $19,000 for those uh, repairs. Sure. Is that a federal grant or a Ohio grant? Like, what's the source of that? <laughs> but I'm I'm laughing because as you remember I um, didn't see all these slides before I presented tonight so Kim's gonna help me answer those questions and I totally didn't mean to set you up for this I was thinking about it, I'm like you left early I'm like oh this is gonna be a great time um, so the community recovery grant uh, came from it's actually being run through the Dayton Foundation um, when the tornadoes hit a lot of people were writing in and giving donations um, to the, and they made this community recovery grant. Um, so their first, when they had all this buckets of money, what they wanted to do is help people get back into their homes, renovate homes, or if they just walked away from the homes, they rebuilt it just to kind of pretty much build back up the community, not only in Beaver Creek, but surrounding areas. Um, once they had all of that taken care of, what they decided to do is like, all right, well, let's go back out to all the communities. And he, you know, I'm not sure what, how much money they had left. It's like opening it up to um, government entities um, or other neighborhoods to say what else is needed from the tornado damage. And so, yes, like Aaron said, um, we lost a lot of trees. Grangeview Acres, um, that was in a really, that was hit hard. Um, but because the park was centrally located, um, a lot of the construction um, trucks were parked there um, or if like telephone poles so that was used as a staging area and so the turf was just tore up so we're going to be able to um, redo that grade it um, put seed down and then um, yes the roofs uh, will be able to replace two cabin roofs at Warringer Park so really thankful for this group for allowing us to win the money I mean we're there's no way we would have been able to do most of this on our own. We had some money uh, set aside for trees, but I think we're quadrupling what we were going to plant because of this, and the roofs were not even on our radar because we knew of the cost of it. So, sorry, Ari. Do you think Wartinger Park is complete now as far as you know all the damage that occurred during the tornadoes? Do you think it's okay at this point that we don't need to seek out more funding to do any more repairs? So there is, um, unfortunately, at the time when we wrote the grant, uh, we had a quote for roofs. Um, and then you, maybe you've been noticing supplies have gone up. So instead of being able to replace four roofs, we're only going to be able to do two. Um, so there's two ca cabins that will still need a roof. Um, and then we're always going to be replanting trees out there because we lost a lot. Um, and then as far as like from tornado damage, I think we're in pretty good shape. There's some things like the cabins need um, chinking, um, 
there are some like concrete that needs to be fixed, not from the tornado, is just general wear and tear. So stuff still needs to be done at, at Wartinger, but from tornado damage, we're pretty darn close. You're welcome. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> oh, and that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> What other questions can Kim help answer for you? Okay, question. I was just curious, what's the water source for the Lafino Pond? That, um, you know, I always figured it was kind of stagnant because I didn't think I saw much movement except for the wind. Is that a stream of some type or underground stream? I don't know that I know the answer to that. Um, I know currently we are working on a dam safety um, study because um, we have a dam in there just to make sure that the water doesn't flow um, into the neighborhood. Um, and I don't know if it was originally built as a detention or retention pond, um, but I can find out and I can let you know. It, Yeah, the water basically stays there. It doesn't go anywhere. It's kind of... Um, for the most part, self-contained, but there is an underground, this is just my made-up words, underground tunnel where some of the water will go, pipe, maybe that's what it is, but I can get some better information for you. Kim doesn't really know. <laughs> did, did any of it sound really good, though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you said underground tunnel. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, that's not right either, but it's the best I can do right now. Hey. You have any other questions? No. Yeah, I don't think I do either. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> uh, our next item is old business. Um, I looked at, I wasn't here last month. I looked at the old notes and didn't see anything. I know we do have, um, uh, there were some also notes about um, future volunteer programs and a couple of other things, and I know we've got a work session scheduled for October, so I think we'll, um, push anything that was in that category off to our meeting on October the 11th. Um, new business. I know you mentioned uh, tri truck, so that's a volunteer opportunity coming up. And fishing derby, with the way you're doing it now, doesn't really need volunteers, does it? Not a whole lot. Um, okay. Expect an email from me later this week um, with suggestions if you would like to go out to the park during those fishing derby dates. Um, and we'll have information signs up and flyers out there, um, but that you can help s educate the public um, if they're not really sure what it is and encourage them to participate. Okay. Um, but we don't have too much that needs done. Um, if people are unable to pick up the prizes when they win, I might ask for volunteer deliveries, sure. which might be fun. But okay. Anything else on the, on the volunteer front? Mm -mm. Put Have down a try a truck. October fifteenth would be great. So for the try a truck, and last year or the year before, we got together and put things, goody things together. Are you doing that again this year? Hmm. Where you need volunteers? We did that for because we did a drive through that year. Yes. Um, but you let can me let think us know on that. that I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next item on our agenda is unscheduled visitors. We typically don't have visitors, sir, and didn't know if you just wanted to come and attend or if you had something you wanted to ask or share the board. Um, I am here partly because I'm catching up. Okay. Yeah, you can come to the mic, sir, if you'd like, or, you know. Because you can all hear me, Mike. Yeah, he the. That's the casual nature of our interaction now. Uh, but yeah, at, at your seat, we can hear you, but the, the TV can't. So please. Okay. Yeah, that voice surprised me. <laughs> um, I uh, picked up the In Touch, which, to be honest, I've not looked at much at all over the years, and uh, saw stuff about, oh, um, the uh, Beaver Creek Wetlands Association, which I know a little bit about, 
and uh, also parks, recreation, and culture, and thinking, you know, I'm retired. I could do some volunteer stuff if, uh, you know, there's a serious need for low-skilled people. And um, I think it was later that same day that WYSO announced the purchase of new parkland, which is very exciting. And uh, I looked at the map online because I just heard, you know, bits and pieces of it on the radio and realized that it's about a two or three minute walk from my house. Okay. I live very close to Grange Hall and East Patterson. And so now I'm very interested. Uh, and I understand that it's just been purchased and it might be quite a while before there's money for development. But I wanted to find out where I could find out more. Okay. Well, we can certainly share some information with that. It's actually probably on all our lists to ask about <laughs> before before we leave here tonight. So we will we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, as far as volunteer opportunities, is there is there a list or anything that we can get this gentleman on so that he at least is aware of those? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I've been on the website too, okay. so I can can mm -hmm. find that easily. Okay. I, actually, I already called the Wetlands Association. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry if I cut you off. If you have anything else, to, okay. Then if we can, we'll move on, and we'll actually talk about that park here okay. momentarily. Do we sit down now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your attendance. What is that? Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So um, that moves us to action items. I'll kind of save that other piece for the. Well, I guess we could talk about that in this section. It's an action item for you, right? I think so. Yeah. So. How's the park, new park coming? It's great. <laughs> it's still there. We haven't lost it yet. Yeah, so we closed on the, always got to check it. Uh, we closed on the additional 48 uh, just last week. So we are the proud owners of 148 acres. Uh, it's really exciting. Um, a staff met with our consultant s this summer sometime. Um, just to kind of have a preliminary discussion about, hey, you know, from the staff side of you, what kind of things would we want to see? What have we heard from the community? Uh, we also pulled out our master plan, master plan that yeah. you know we have um, from 2019. Um, it's just like you know, here's amenities that people want to see. Here's amenities that they want to see that we don't have, and here's amenities that maybe weren't a thing back then, mm -hmm. which so long ago, um, but is now popular today. Uh, so we gave them all that information. Um, they have, they, it's Branch Center Carroll who is doing the, um, the, the study and the plan for us. Um, they had a couple guys come out and do a site survey. So they walked the entire parcel, um, just to kind of see, you know, the challenges, the opportunities of, if we wanted to put in pickleball courts, is it viable and where would be a good place to put it? If we wanted, and just some of the top things that we've seen from um, our master plan, uh, rectangle fields can be anything, soccer, um, football, lacrosse, uh, dog park, pickleball courts, splash pad, um, shelters, playgrounds, all those type of things, and also um, hiking trails. So all of these, those different things, plus anything else, um, they just wanted <coughs> to make sure, will it work in that in that area and also there is some wetlands areas and some marshy that we not we can't necessarily um, develop so right now they are working on a few different site plans and then once those are developed we'll be able to bring that out to the community and say all right here's some different ideas um, what would you like to see what makes sense uh, for you and your family your needs your wants um, and it could be well, I like this over here, but I don't like this thing, but I like this thing at this site plan. Okay. Um, and so we'll work through it that way. Um, so this fall, we are planning to get that out to the community and start the process rolling. Because, sir, like you said, we, there's no funding right now, but we can't look at funding until we know. So you have a plan. Yes. So it'll be a phased <coughs> approach. Um, and then we'll just kind of say, all right, here's where we're at. Here's what we want to do. And then we'll figure out funding at that point. But um, I know next year, at least, we do have money in the, we're putting money in the budget for a gravel parking lot. 
um, the entrance right across from Ankeny Road, I'm sorry, Ankeny School, is kind of, there's already an entrance there. So that's going to be one of our entrances. You can drive in, we have a parking lot, and then that way we can kind of start developing trails so people could at least start getting onto the property. Um, and we are beginning to mow it because those weeds, um, some of them were taller than I was. So <laughs> getting all that mowed down too so it doesn't become an eyesore. Now that we own it, we want to make sure that it's looking halfway decent. Right. So, Did Beaver Creek Cross Country ever reach out? They did. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes. So Luke, Sh I always get his name wrong, Schweikart? Schweikert? He wasn't the one I talked to. He was one of the parents that volunteers and, oh, and okay. I don't know the coach. Yeah, so I, um, he's one of the coaches, and so I let him know. Um, and one of the things that, at least internally, we've seen is there's a need for a 5K course. Um, right now, they're running through the streets. We're, they're, we're trying to get them on the bike path, but they're everywhere and it does it it takes staff time but it also it may close roads right so the hope is we're going to be able to get a 5k course out there as well and i'm working with a cross country coach to help develop and design that so whether it's one or two okay. um, we'll have a couple people can just go out and run it or well they'll actually be able to have their cross country meets there Good. any other questions on that awesome Thank you for that update. Oh, yes, sir. Um, you mentioned the uh, 2019 master plan. Is that available online somewhere? Yeah, so our 2019 master plan, um, the executive summary is available on our website. Um, if you go to City of Beaver Creek and then go to the Parks and Recreation page, the executive summary is right there. The full plan is a few hundred pages long, so we weren't able to get everything on there. Um, but the executive summary sums it all up of like what we want to do. Okay. And, and what is the, the scope of that plan? I mean, it's not all about this one park, I'm sure. Correct. So that 2019, the master plan is for the entire Parks and Recreation, Parks, Recreation and Culture Division. Uh, so when we did it, we did, um, there were multiple public forums, um, stakeholder group uh, talks. We met with City Council, Beaver Creek Township. Um, a lot of our user groups, whether they're sports or um, the Beaver Creek Theater, everybody just see all of parks and facilities, what are their needs? And that's how we came up with, um, there was a kind of a, an assessment for each park and each facility of what needs to be done. Um, and then it was also ranked priority wise. Um, so that's how we come up uh, with our capital projects every single year, whether it's developing a hiking trail, um, putting a new playground in. Um, those are the only two projects. What, do we do a whole lot of projects. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's how we come up with our capital listing every single year. We go back to the master plan, the priorities, and see how it fits within our budget. It also established long-term goals, and we shared some of those right, right before you got here, um, as well as um, it's programmatic, not just facilities, but programs as well. Sure. So, wow, well, now it's really loud. That's great. Sorry. Um, so we'll be putting it out on, um, we'll put information out on our website and also show social media, as well as we'll try to get some news releases out there. As, um, our parks department is able to do email blasts and our senior center is also able to do email blasts. So we'll try to get it out um, in as every way possible. And if anybody is interested, they haven't heard in anything, they're welcome to call our parks office as well. So we're in the middle of September. I'm hoping within the next few weeks we're going to be able to start pumping some information out. Um, so, but, yeah, we're, Jackie's phenomenal on the phone. She's happy to take phone calls and, and answer questions. Jackie's right across from me. Uh, she's never on camera. Nobody ever sees her. But, um, but yeah, no, we're, it, I think the hardest thing that we do is communication and trying to get, we always miss somebody, so people are certainly able to call our office, email us, and we're trying to spread the word as best as possible because it's truly a community survey. 
Um, I can develop an awesome park, but it's not my park, it's Beaver Creek's park. So we want to get as much input as we can. Um, so that moves us on to board time, and um, we'll start with Sharon, if you have anything. I don't really have anything other than this was great, you know. It's, this was a good report, finding out all what's going on. Thank you. Cecilia? So the perennial exchange is September 24th at 10 o'clock, um, so it's twice a year. So bring 10, if you want to get some free plants, bring 10. And it doesn't have to be perennials, it can be anything, any kind of plant. Plus, if you want to get rid of, let's say, planting books or tools or pots, whatever you want to get rid of, you can bring. And then we put them all together on picnic tables. And then we have 10 rounds and you pick whatever you want. And then we keep repeating that till pretty much everything's gone. Are you still doing the raffle if you bring an extra item? Yes. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I think Eric has been there. But um, anyways, also if you bring an 11th plant, we put it on a special table, and all the 11th plants are together, and then you put your name in the hat, and that individual gets all the plants that are on the table. If they don't want them all, then they don't have to take them. They can put some back. Cause sometimes they get too much, you know, of a certain thing. So it's usually in the fall we get probably about 45 people. Uh, in the spring, though, we last time was crazy. We, like, ran out of picnic tables. And I think we counted, what did I tell you guys, 70, something like that. So uh, spring was uh, was really crazy. But usually fall, people are kind of tired of their plants, and they're ready to stay indoors, so we, it's not as big. At which park? Rotary Park at the Pavilion. Thank you. I have a confession to make. I am on a, on a uh, community coalition staff group at Wright State, and I'm copying your idea. We're doing a perennial exchange the following Friday after your. So I've read the flyer multiple times over the last week <laughs> as I've put my own together. So you, I, I probably will just see what happens and fail or succeed and, and go from there. But uh, it appeared to be. Uh, but it was a great idea, so we're stealing it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to, well, I have two. Uh, one, um, I will share that my two-and-a-half-year-old grandson uh, fully approves of everything at Shout Park currently, So, but I'm sure he'll be excited. He is a toddler, so I'm sure he'll be excited about those new opportunities. Um, and my whole family thinks I pronounce Shout Park incorrectly because I do pronounce it correctly. Um, and then uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to try a truck this weekend. I'm going to try to bring him as well. So. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm with you. Um, October the 15th. Right. That's it. That's all I've got. Um, does anybody have anything else? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. So motion so accepted and approved. Meeting adjourned.